Hi everyone, welcome to Plar Academy. I really hope this video helps you out. If it does, I'd super appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel, give this video a like, share it with your friends and leave a positive comment. Your support really keeps me motivated to create more great videos for you. What we'll cover. I've broken down the content in Unit 2, Waves and Electricity, just like you see here. And I've made sure to cover every topic exactly according to the Physics International A-Level Edexcel syllabus, which you can see right here. In this video, we're diving into topic 4, Electricity, specifically focusing on the internal resistance. Let's get started! The internal resistance of the power supply. The internal resistance caused by the material in the power supply. For example, in a battery or cell, the internal resistance is due to the resistance of the electrolytic solution in the cell. In a generator or transformer, the internal resistance is due to the resistance of the coils and other wiring in the apparatus. The internal resistance is what makes batteries and cells warm up when they are used. Consider a battery of EMF E and internal resistance R, to connect in series with the external resistance R and switch S, as shown. The voltmeter V1 measures the EMF E, or terminal PD of the battery. The voltmeter V2 measures the PD across the external resistance R. As the switch S is opened, as shown, no current flows through the battery so no heat energy is lost due to the internal resistance, and there is no lost voltage. The voltmeter V1 is now equal to the EMF E of the battery. The voltmeter V2 is zero because no current flows through the circuit. As the switch S is closed, as shown, the current, I, flows through the battery, so heat energy is lost due to the internal resistance, and there is a lost voltage. The voltmeter V1 is decreased to less than the EMF E. The voltmeter V2 is equal terminal PD that measured by V1, so V2 equals V1. As the resistance R decreases, the current I increases. This causes the lost voltage at the internal resistance R to increase, resulting in a decrease in the terminal PD of the power supply. According to the conservation of energy, we can wrote the equation as the EMF E equals PD across the external resistance plus PD across the internal resistance. The EMF E of a battery represents the work done per unit charge to move charges around a circuit. This work done is equal to the sum of the energy transferred per unit charge across the external resistance which is the voltage across the external resistance R. And the energy transferred per unit charge across the internal resistance, which is the voltage across the internal resistance. The voltage across the external resistance R is measured by the voltmeter, which is equal to the terminal PD of the battery. We substitute the voltage across the external resistance R equals V, and the voltage across the internal resistance equals I times R and V equals I times the external resistance R. Then we factor out I, like this. Where I is the current that flows through the circuit. The experiment to determine the internal resistance of the battery. We set up the circuit, as shown in the diagram. By varying the external resistance R, we recorded the current I from the ammeter, and the terminal PD from the voltmeter in the table. We plotted the graph of the PDV against the current I, as shown. The graph is the straight line with negative gradient, as shown. From the equation of the EMF E equals V plus IR. We rearrange the equation as V equals E minus IR. And V equals negative RI plus E. From the equation of the straight line, y equals mx plus c. y-axis is represented the terminal PDV. x-axis is represented the current I. So, the gradient m equals negative internal resistance R. And the y-interception c equals the EMF E. 
So, we can calculate the internal resistance of the power supply using the gradient of the graph. The dissipated power at the external resistance R. From the previous experiment, by varying the external resistance R, we recorded the current I from the ammeter and the terminal PD V from the voltmeter in the table. We calculated the power dissipated in the external resistance R using P equals I squared R and recorded the results in the table. We plotted the graph of the dissipated power P against the external resistance R as shown. The power output form a source is dependent on the internal resistance of the source and on the external resistance R. The graph shows how the power output varies. We see that there is maximum power output when the external resistance is equal to the internal resistance. So, the maximum power P dissipated at the external resistance R when the external resistance is equal to the internal resistance. The shape of this graph corresponds to the theoretical curve of the equation P equals E squared R divided by sum of external resistance and internal resistance squared, where EMF E and internal resistance are constant. This equation can derive from P equals I squared R. As EMF E equals terminal PD V plus the current I times the internal resistance R. We rearrange the equation as I equals E divided by sum of external resistance and internal resistance. Substituting this equation into this equation like this. We get the P equals E squared R divided by sum of external resistance and internal resistance like this. A cell is connected to a resistor of resistance 3.00 ohms. The current in the resistor is 1.0 amperes. A second identical resistor is added in parallel. The current becomes 1.93 amperes. What are the EMF E and internal resistance R of the cell? From the equation the EMF E equals the current I times the external resistance R plus the current I times the internal resistance R. For first circuit, we substitute the current I equals 1 amperes, and the external resistance R equals 3 ohms. So, E equals 3.00 plus the internal resistance R. For second circuit, we calculate the total resistance using 1 over RT equals 1 over 3 plus 1 over 3. So, total resistance RT equals 1.5 ohms. We substitute the current I equals 1.93 amperes, and the external resistance R equals 1.5 ohms. So, E equals 2.895 plus 1.93 R. We solve two simultaneous equations to find the internal resistance R like this. We get the internal resistance equals 0.113 ohms for three significant figures. We substitute the internal resistance into this equation. We get the EMF E equals 3.11 volts for three significant figures. So, C is correct. Exam style question. A car battery is constructed using six cells connected in series with a combined electromotive force, EMF, of 12 volts. A. State what is meant by EMF. The EMF is the work done per unit charge from power supply to drive the unit charge around the whole circuit. You will get one mark from energy supplied per unit charge or work done per unit charge or the work done moving unit charge around the whole circuit. B. A student set up the circuit shown using the car battery. The student adjusted the variable resistor until the reading on the voltmeter was 11.81 volts. The reading on the ammeter was 9.83 amperes. 1. Calculate the internal resistance of the car battery. We calculate the internal resistance using E equals V plus IR, where E is the EMF in volt, V is terminal PD from voltmeter in volt, and I is the current in the whole circuit in ampere. Substituting E as 12 volts, V as 11 to 81 volts, and I as 9.83 amperes, we get the internal resistance as 1.9 times 10 power negative 2 ohms for two significant figures. You will get two marks from use of E equals V plus IR.
Correct the internal resistance as 1.9 times 10 power negative 2 ohms. B. 2. The student adjusted the variable resistor several times and recorded corresponding values from the ammeter and voltmeter. Describe how the values can be used to determine the internal resistance of the battery using a graphical method. To plot the graph of PDV against current I. Then determine the gradient of the graph. The gradient of graph is equal to negative R. You will get three marks from. Plot PDV against I. Determine the gradient of graph. Gradient is negative R. C. With use, the internal resistance of a battery will increase. Eventually, the power available from a battery will become too small to be useful. The student calculated the power available from a battery of EMF 9 volts and internal resistance 0 0.1 ohms when connected across a 5 ohms resistor. He concluded that when the internal resistance had risen to 0 0.5 ohms, the power dissipated in the 5 ohms resistor would reduce to 70% of its original value. We calculate the current in a circuit using I equal EMF E over total resistance RT. Substituting E as 9 volts and RT as 5 plus 0.1 ohms, we get the current in the circuit as 1.7647 amperes. We calculate the initial power dissipated at a resistor using P equals I squared R, substituting I as 1.7647 amperes and R as 5 ohms. We get the initial power dissipated as 15.57 watts, as the internal resistance increases to 0 0.5 ohms, causing the current to decrease. We calculate the current in the circuit using I equal EMF E over total resistance RT, substituting E as 9 volts and RT as 5 plus 0 0.5 ohms. We get the current in the circuit as 1.6363 amperes. We calculate the final power dissipated at a resistor using P equals I squared R, substituting I as 1.6363 amperes and R as 5 ohms. We get the final power dissipated as 13.38 watts. So, we see that the power dissipated to reduce as 86% of its original value, so the student is incorrect. You will get 4 marks from. Calculate circuit current using I equal E over total R. Use of power equation to calculate power dissipated at fixed resistor. Divides final power by initial power. Calculated value for final power over initial power is greater than 70%. I really hope this video helps you out. If it does, I'd super appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel, give this video a like, share it with your friends and leave a positive comment. Your support really keeps me motivated to create more great videos for you.